Welcome back to our Applied Regression Analysis Series. I'm Mark Ledbetter and this is Lecture Video 7 and we're reviewing basic statistics and this is Part 3. In this lecture we'll cover continuous probability distributions and specifically the normal distribution. So, the properties. For a continuous probability distribution it's very different than a discrete distribution because in a discrete distribution you can say the probability that x is equal to little x is a number but here it is a number but it's zero. Because the area under the curve is one, the probability in the whole probability distribution, the total, is one. And since it's continuous then this line, any between any two points on this line there are an infinite number of values. So if I take one and divide it by infinity I end up with zero. So that's one way to uh, uh, understand this. Another way is that we can use area under the curve as the same thing to mean the same thing as probability. Okay, so we can interchange area and probability here. So as long as we have a range of x, in other words it's not just equal to some value, but if we have a range between two values, then there will be area in between those, and that means that there will be probability, and probabilities have to be between 0 and 1. So this is a picture of a normal distribution, it, um, and we say that um, x is distributed as a normal distribution with mean mu, standard deviation sigma, uh, we can write that as x tilde n. So this, we read this as x distributed as normal mean mu uh, standard deviation sigma. And remember, these are going to be replaced with numbers. Okay. So I, I need to tell you that this textbook is different than many or most. Most use sigma squared here, and I'm used to that, but I will use sigma for this course so that we don't get confused. So I will be consistent with the book. And we're going to have multiple variables in our regression analysis. We all always have at least two, x and y. And so if we have x and y, we can use mu sub x and sigma sub x to denote the difference between x and y. We can use a y here for the y. When we get to multiple regression, we'll have many x variables, so we'll call them x1, x2, etc. And so we can use that subscript here to again keep them separate and uh, straight so we know what we're talking about. The normal distribution has several properties. The first is that it's bell-shaped and it's symmetric. And we'll talk about symmetry in a minute. Area under the continuous distribution curves, including the normal, the total area is equal to 1. And again, area and probability are interchangeable. They mean the same thing when we're talking about probability, uh, continuous probability distributions. Now, symmetry um, means that the, uh, the mean and the median are the same value. Uh, that's true for all symmetric distributions. That results in mu having the same properties as the median. So, uh, here is mu in the center. The area to the left of mu will be 0.5 and the area to the right of mu will be 0.5. But even more importantly, if we go out one standard deviation to the left and one standard deviation to the right, the area here is the same as the area here. So if we go the same distance away from mu in the, in the two directions, we're going to have the same areas. Notice that even if I take an area that's um, not from mu, I can take any area, say from negative 1 standard deviation to negative 2 standard deviations, that's 13.6% or 0.136 probability. Look at the difference, the probability for the area between 1 positive 1 and positive 2 standard deviations. It's the same. So that's a property we're going to make use of to make things uh, easier in the future when we're solving problems. Now the standard normal distribution has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. So if the standard deviation is 1, the variance is 1. 1 squared is 1. And we use this formula z to transform x to a z or standard normal statistic or variable. And then we can also solve the same equation for x and we get this expression. So those are expressions you you should put on your formula sheet. Hint, hint. Now, for the normal distribution, as I mentioned, 
we have to have some area in order to have any probability, in, in order for the probability not to be zero. And we're working with x here, and we have two values, a and b, and mu is in the center. Now this is equivalent to, or the same thing as, uh, the z values. So if I take a z-score for a and a z-score for b, then the area between those two is the same area or same probability as the area between a and b under the x scale. So we are simply uh, transforming from x to z. Now percentiles, when we're talking about a um, continuous distribution, uh, we can we can use this formula for x of p, and that's mu sub x plus sigma sub x times z sub p. Now, um, it's def the definition here is that this x sub p is our percentile. So if this is the 80th percentile, then that would be x sub uh, 80, or 0.8, and that would mean that the p here is 0.8. So if we know the probability we can use that with the z table to find z sub p. So if this is 0.8, then z sub 0.8, we'd find that value. And then we could plug it into our equation here and find the x value, the percentile that we're looking for. OK, so now let's do an example of this. All right, in this example, mu is 140 and sigma is 40. So x is going to be distributed as a normal with 140 as the mean and 40 as the standard deviation. That's how we write it. Okay. So we're asking what is the 95th percentile? So we want to see that. That means that this p is 0.95 and so this p is 0.95. Now, we find p inside the z-table. So we're looking inside the z-table. I'm going to use the one from SAT222. And I'm looking for 0 0.9500 in here. And these two numbers are the closest, 0 0.9495 and 0 0.9505. And then I see this asterisk, and I follow that line down to the bottom, and I, ooh, here's what I'm looking for, 0 0.9500. And the z-score that goes with it is 1.645. So I come back over here and I say that this, whoops, sorry, this is uh, 1.645, that's my z-score, and I want to know x sub p, which is x sub 0.95. So then my formula is x sub 0.95 is equal to mu plus uh, sigma x, mu x sigma x, times z sub p. Now, mu sub x is 140 plus sigma sub x, which is going to be 40, times z sub p, which is 1.645. And this is equal to 205.8. So this is my 95th percentile. Percentile. All right, so that is the lecture video for this portion. Please don't forget to scan your lecture notes into Google Drive by midnight on the due date for this video that you'll find on your course calendar. You want to be neat on these lecture notes for you because you're the one that's going to be using them. And please update your formula sheet if you haven't already. If you have questions, please come to my hours or you can email me. I am happy to help you. See you next time.